This week on Rockstar Superhero. Speaking today with Adam Frake Syme of UK supergroup Hellblind was a wonderful experience for me. The joy of his character came out in proportions I totally was not expecting from a man who makes those sounds. It was as eye-opening as it was ear-numbing. Adam gave me some insight into his life before Hellblind, how the band ultimately got together, and how they plan on taking the planet by storm one stage at a time. You may not know the name Hellblind, at least not yet, but you know the bands from whence they came, namely Pitch Shifter and Romeo Must Die. Adam and I had a great time, and as an aside, his accent is amazing. I mean, I felt like I was in a Guy Ritchie movie, for God's sake. That said, welcome to the destruction of ignorance as you walk the path into a heavy metal supercell. This is Hellblind on Rockstar Superhero. The new work by Hellblind, I mean, it's 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 pretty mesmerizing. I've heard I've heard the all five songs. You know, I got the link. You know, I I'm oh sorry. great, yeah. For everybody well, this, out there this, listening, they can't they can't hear it yet, but I've heard it. <laughs> this is interesting because you're the first person I've spoke to out of the band and Scott who mixed it who has heard it. Oh, so wow, it's interesting because I, I it's obviously hard if you're close to something, isn't it? Yeah, but I yeah. don't really know what to lump it in with what who it sounds like we weren't trying to we didn't start writing with an objective in mind of how we wanted to sound we literally it came about quite organically and we would just play what we wanted to hear yeah so who would you who could who would you (laughs) compare it to or who do you think what do you think would be a good tour for us to try and get (laughs) oh my goodness okay okay so First of all, thanks for asking me. It's interesting that you're doing this too, because the best interviews are, are when we talk, right? We're having a conversation. Um, you know what, Adam? I I don't know if I can necessarily compartmentalize it that simple, but um the very first thing that came out of my mind, and and I am and, and if I and if I offend you, I'm sorry. The very Go first thing it. that came out was Pantera. Right, okay. Well, everyone loves Pantera. Well, I love Pantera. Yeah. I, well, I don't that, know if I hear the Pantera, but that's not a bad thing because yeah. it's a band that I like. It's it's not that it sounds like Pantera. That's not it. If if I were to lump you in with a style, that's and, and I'm and I'm not talking about the Texas Louisiana groove thing. It's it's not the political of, it's not the p- political views. <laughs> no, 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 it's your voice. It's your right, voice, okay. and 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 your voice sounds. I know this sounds stupid. Your voice sounds nothing like Phil Anselmo. Nothing. Unfortunately, <laughs> <laughs> no. But you know what, man? There's something about it that just the very first thing I thought of is is okay. I suck at comparing bands. I do. I I think what I, uh, honestly, Adam, what draws me to Hellblind. And to the previous work, because I've listened to the other things you guys have done in the past, you know, other bands you've been a part of or, you know, or that the other guys have been a part of, you know, Pitch Shifter and whatnot. And and I'm always looking as a musician, I'm always looking for what's unique about a band. I'm not trying to ever compare it to what I've heard before. You know, it's only when it's derivative that I start comparing it. That's why it sounds so stupid for me to say Pantera. I, I, it doesn't sound like Pantera at all, but I don't know what to compare it to. Yeah, no, yeah, I know. I kind of know what you mean. As, as far as, like I said, usually I think when people start a band, you, you start with every band I've been in before you have your influence and you think, well, if I t- we take a bit of that and a bit of that, and there's nothing wrong with doing that. That's just how it usually works right. as far as I know. Right. Right. For not for any reason, we we just didn't set out like that. It was more let's just see what happens. Yeah. So yeah. which is why now we, we've ended up with something that I don't really know what it is. <laughs> yeah. Well, but you know I'm what? With it. You know, it's interesting. But I mean, okay. So let me turn it back on you. I mean, what would you when you hear the EP? Mm-hmm. 
when you listen back, you know, do you hear any specific stylistic approaches that have been on your radar for years? You know, is there anything you wish you had done for the record that's maybe different? No, I mean, obviously the first, I think, well, we did actually write another two songs that were the first songs we wrote gotcha. that we weren't happy with, but we took elements of those. Um, but they're five of the first seven songs that we that we wrote. They were yeah. the, the five of the seven that we were most happy with. Mm. Uh, so it's not like there's a... We haven't got the sound yet. Mm. The, it's the, We're working towards it, you know? Yeah. So as I said, we didn't have something in what we just... We were playing what organically felt right, and we thought, you know, maybe the second release in, we might be able to look back on this and see, like, right, okay, this worked. This yeah. didn't. This not so much, and we will try and carve our own sound from there. But at the moment, I'm pretty. I'm pretty happy with it. There's there's uh, there's aspects that I think we will use more going forward. Yeah. But uh, no, no. Please, how it's going. It's it's my expectations. If you're going into something not knowing how it's gonna, you know, without a set plan, we if if we hadn't have been like over the moon with it, we wouldn't have put it out. You know. It was right. fine. I would have, we would have moved on or carried on or, or, or done something else. So I'm definitely happy with how with how the songs have sort of come together. Yeah. And it sounds, yeah, I think it's, as you said, it's hard to compare it to something too much, which I, th I think is a good thing, I think. I, but, I think so. <laughs> but it's probably harder to sell to somebody to say, come and check this out. It sounds just like a bob. it's harder to get over that initial hump. Sure, oh, you know. but Who I mean, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Who cares? I mean, look, the reality is, is I mean, how did you uh, two sell themselves in the beginning? They didn't sound like anybody but you two, no, right? I mean, yeah, you're right. They did right? have an amazing singer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, but yeah, but here's the thing: you're yeah. amazing. You're an amazing singer, an amazing front man. I mean, it's a different style completely, right? It's not so much about the melody; it's about the intensity. Yeah, but but you know what? I found uh, uh, this happens to me a lot now. Now that I'm in my mid 50s, I found that I've drifted away from what drew me as a child. So when I was a young man, it was in the 70s, right? My whole thing was uh, pop rock and then maybe um you know adult contemporary stuff and then progressive rock like uh, Rush and Kansas and you know You're not, you're not about to tell me that you you've got off Rush, surely. Well, of course. Of course. No, you've got off Rush. <laughs> Yes. What's wrong with Rush? <laughs> There's nothing wrong with it. It's just, and I'm not saying about grown it. It's just I've I've moved f farther to the edge. All of a sudden, seriously, man. All of a sudden, all I'm listening to is hardcore, hardcore thrash, hardcore metal, death metal. You know what I mean? Just you know, and yeah. I, I don't want to. I, I don't want to just you know call everything death metal. Sound like an old man, you know, talking about mowing his lawn. But but I, I love intense, um, edgy. You know, I love the metalcore thing. I love the thrash thing. You know, like uh, uh, are you familiar with a band from Finland called Atlas? No. Holy shit! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Holy shit! Let me, let me draw it down. <laughs> yeah, Atlas. Uh, they 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 they've invented a style of music they called Northcore. Because, because you know, everything's got to have core in it nowadays. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but they said, look, we really aren't doing traditional metalcore, and the truth is, they're not. They are doing something sludgy and heavy and slow and intense, and because it's so intensely Finnish, if that makes a makes sense, mm -hmm. that it's hard to really say it. It sounds almost like metal folk music i can't quite explain it but it's it's extraordinary and and heavy and um really emotional it sounds like right, death okay. it's incredible oh right. i'll be sure to check them out yeah thanks for the tip yeah so now that you say this yeah your question earlier what should we do who should we go out with it should be them and on top of that it should they be sound perfect yes it's, and I've never been to Finland. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and and you know, and then pick a pick an American, you know, deathcore band like uh, Enterprise Earth or yeah. or Great American Ghost, you know. 
uh, ingested something like that. Get out there with those guys. You get make a make a three band tour with that. Holy crap! I would I would I would fly across the Atlantic to see that. <laughs> do you know what I do miss? Bills used to be like years ago. Were far more dynamic. Now, if you go to a show, you're it's generally promoters play it very safe. You'll have three bands that sound very much alike. Yep. Which is yep. is dull, you know. Yep. It's a shame. So I, I definitely like when we do start playing. It'd be nice to play some like diverse lineups. That's good. That's good. I'll tell you. I saw um, I saw Haken uh, a couple of years ago. They played with Thank You Scientist and Power Glove. <laughs> For real, Power Glove's probably the best name I've ever heard. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and that band is that band is both. It's like Guar, right? But doing game music, right? It's it's <laughs> it's so much fun. It's so stupid, and it and it's just. But they're but they're great musicians. You know what I mean? It's fantastic. Yeah. And and so why can't we be entertained? I mean, have you gone? Are you familiar with Baby Metal? Yeah, I've seen Baby Metal at festivals a couple of times. Okay, and and they stand out like a sore thumb. I didn't like it. I understand. But everybody around me seems to be really enjoying themselves, which, you know, so I say to watch. And it was good, yes, different. Yeah. But and it, it, I guess it was entertaining because I did stand there for 40 minutes. Whereas, and, and that's what I'm usually if at. there was Usually, if there was something that I wasn't, that wasn't really kicking my ass, I wouldn't give it for given 40 minutes. But. Yeah. Maybe it's the uh, the skirts. I don't know. <laughs> it, it could be the skirts. It also could be the fact that it's something you've never seen, and it doesn't. Yeah. It absolutely, no matter how great, because the band is great. The yeah. girls, the girls. I think the band is great the, as as musicians. As, as, yeah. I mean, as actual talents. I don't. I don't necessarily saying that the. I like the songs, but I, I the band as talents are pretty fantastic. They're great players. Yeah, totally. <laughs> You're totally disagreeing with me. <laughs> no, I'm not. So- I Come would on, say okay. no. I, I think like <sighs> no, they were great players. They're great players. But that's <laughs> not what that's, that's not that's not why you go to a show, is it? I don't know. It was weird. I felt like I was like I've seen him. I think he might even be twice, two different festivals. It's like it yeah. suddenly turned into the X Factor or something yeah, that you're yeah. watching live. It's kind of strange. <laughs> it is. So, but it's it's you know what it is it's marketed so well i mean you should see them in japan holy crap it doesn't matter yeah. if you hate that stuff you know all it is is j-pop with a metal band behind it you know? yeah yeah it's it's crap in a lot of ways but it is entertaining you know and and everybody's smiling because they can't believe the stupidity of what they're seeing <laughs> <laughs> but what you i can't believe so you'd still prefer to see rush right than baby metal even I, though you've got oh, off yeah. Rush. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Of course. I mean, I can't see Rush anymore. I, you know, I, I I wish they were open nah. to continuing on without Neil. I would audition in a heartbeat. I, I totally would. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm not saying I would get it. I, I think I could get it. I mean, if, if they would take a, you know, a, a non-famous person, you know, yeah. but, but just like Spinal Tap, you know, when they went out in the early 90s and actually sort of restarted their fake career, I mean, freaking Mick Fleetwood showed up to audition. <laughs> I mean, you can't you can't overcome that. No. Nah. No, nah, that's it. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> so so I want to ask you a few things about you. Is that cool? Okay, so um, one of the cornerstones of my show is I'm really into etymology. Um, I'm really into names and what they mean. And I, I don't mean in some weird new agey way. I just think it's fascinating that names define us. Mm-hmm. And you're named Adam, right? You're the oh, I, first, I believe so. The first <laughs> name, right? <laughs> and I, 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 wondered, I wondered how much that name has... Um, sort of applied to your life, right? I mean, in Hebrew, it means earth, right? We all know in the Bible, it's the name of the first man. Um, but what I find fascinating is that name a lot of times defines who you are. And I'm curious, you know, with your childhood and and maybe how life was for you, did things center around you? You know, did were you an idea? Were you a creator from the very beginning? I, yeah, I, I mean, I'm fairly, I think I was blessed or 
may be cursed with an inflated sense of self-worth <laughs> as a child. <laughs> maybe not as a child, as a young adult. Maybe now. Uh, it's fine. Maybe now, possibly. Yeah. Um, that's why you're a front man. Whether, whether that's got something to do with my name, I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, I don't believe... I don't believe I'm better than anybody else. Right. But I don't believe... I cert, I'm certain nobody is better than me. <laughs> whether that's got anything to do with my name or not, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I mean, okay. So, but at home, did 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 life center around you? Yeah, yeah. I'm telling oh, you, man. Sorry, there's, sorry. Some, there's something about it, man. So, give, give me a. If you're actually you've you've obviously read up on this and you're into yes. it, so give 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 me. Give, when when is let's say let's what's her name? A My, Karen. Oh. A Karen. Uh -huh. What 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 would that mean? Obviously, Adam is more Earth and the first man, so it's more obvious. But or say Julie or Karen or something right. like that. What well, would what would that mean? I think Julie, if my memory serves me right, Julie um, is it has it's something to do with rejoicing or joy. I, I, right, I okay. Think, okay, but it also comes from like the Roman name Julius, right? Um, yeah. which is where the name July comes from. Um, Karen, I don't know. I'd actually have to look it up. I'm looking what it up that, right now. My little boy's name is Atticus. Oh, so what would that? Name. What? What would that? Well, so I can go and tell him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or not? Well, okay. So, so, um, okay. Here we are. Atticus is the adjective meaning belonging to Attica, a region in Athens. Okay, so mm -hmm. so he's an Atticai or of the people of of Athens. Right, okay. So, so he hasn't been to <laughs> <laughs> No, no, but you know what I mean? And now um yeah. I mean so like even the old Roman says it just means a man or belonging to the area of Attica. It would be like saying, um, you know, well, Roman, right? You're a Roman, mm -hmm. you're an Attican. It's just Attica was a region. Um, before it basically um, ended up just being, you know, an area in Greece. So sadly, it's not very fancy, um, <laughs> but it's a badass name. And of course, uh, I, I imagine you got it from some great movie or book you read. Yeah. What, what about Rob? Then? Where, Rob? What, what... Oh, boy. See, oh, boy. Here we go. OK, so Robert means bright or shining. Well, OK. And, and I mean, like name one Robert, I mean, excuse me, I'm not going to brag here, but name one Robert that's stupid. No Roberts are stupid. We're all smart. We're all sort of intense, um, and driven and, and on the, I don't want to say on the spectrum, <laughs> but, but we tend to be a little leaning towards the, the, you know, the higher intellect side. Oh God. I sound like a freaking idiot right now. No, carry on, carry on. <laughs> but, 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 but it's true. And I mean, the names, I, I, every Rob and Robert, I know we're all, we're all just the same weird, um, you know, moderately intelligent slash, um, we're not, we're not introverted. We tend to be extroverted yeah. and, and we tend to be, uh, melodramatic, <laughs> but you know, we're, we're beams of light, man. We're, we're bright and shining. I mean, that's what we're supposed nice. to be. We're supposed to be on a stage, brother. You know? Well, it's not something I've ever looked into. But uh, mm -mm. yeah, maybe I will. So if, if you if you got kids? Dude, I have six children. Right, okay. So what's your firstborn's name? And how, were you into this then? Yes, yes. His name okay. is... So, his... so, so this is going to be the, the what you think is the <laughs> best name to have. Obviously, yeah. if it was the first one that you chose, go on. His, his name is his name is Zachary, which means God remembers. Nice, yeah, yeah. It's a powerful a, name, anyway. It's a powerful name. It, it was really popular in the late eighties. He was born in eighty nine, so mm -hmm. you know he's he's going to be thirty three this year, which is freaking crazy. Like, it's so. <laughs> like I was, it doesn't even matter. You know what I mean? Like I cannot believe <laughs> that I am at this age and I'm still acting like a child. Um. But uh, yeah, he's 33. My my next child, her name was Kaya, which I really love that name, and that means willow tree. 
Right. Okay. Yeah, and it's nice. and it, and if you saw her, you would see that she is um, she is very tall. She's six feet tall, and she's very thin, and she just seems like a willow. I can't explain it. Yeah. Um, my next child, her name is Tiana. Um, it sounds like I'm black man, right? I have all these, all these black men. <laughs> um, but uh, her name is Tiana, and uh, her name means um, Snow Queen or Fairy Princess. And and she's little. She's like five feet tall. So she's so it's weird. Yeah. I've got this really tall daughter and a really short daughter. <laughs> one can um, shoot the other one out of a cannon. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and speaking of shooting, my middle daughter, my Kaya, um, she actually got shot in the stomach. <laughs> By a gun. Oh, shit. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Uh, when she was uh, 14, 13, 14 years old. Yeah. How? Uh, accident or? Yeah, it was an accident. But um, so so I had just come home. It was a Sunday afternoon and I had come home from the next town over. And my wife and I decided to lay down and take a nap. Right. So we're just crashed out, crashed out. <laughs> And and my daughter, she had gone over to a friend of ours house to, you know, play with her, 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 you know, kids are same age, basically. And um, <laughs> I get this call. This is no lie. I get this call and it's, it's the dad of this kid. And he goes, uh, hey, Rob, uh, uh, I just wanted you to know your daughter got shot. <laughs> oh <my laughs> this, God. This, I know, I know, I know. Like totally nonchalant. And I'm like what and i was half asleep and i go is she okay and he goes yeah we think the bullet this is no lie this is the ex- i remember him saying this we think the bullet bounced out <laughs> and i and you know what i said i i said well can she stay like i was like i was, <laughs> I was so asleep you know what i mean and, and you know, like, is, can she stay? Is it going to be okay? Like, I thought maybe like it bounced off of her or something, so, some weird thing. So he says, no, no, dude, we're gonna we're gonna bring her over to your house. Now, here's the thing: what's crazy? First of all, all the stupid shit. Not the, hosp- just, not the hospital, right? All the stupid shit I said, and then, but but then he didn't take her to the hospital. I I think they were just in sh- they could believe that it happened and and that she was alive. You know what I mean? Yeah. But but so. I go downstairs to my house and in walks the dad with my daughter and she's doubled over in pain. And I, and I'm like, let me see what's going on. And she stands up and she's got a freaking bullet hole in her abdomen. Oh my God. So we, we live about a mile from the hospital. So we go driving, you know, super fast up the hill and we said, Hey, our daughter got shot. And they're like, what? You know what I mean? Cause this is a small town. This, that doesn't happen here. Yeah. And and uh, they monitor, they do all this stuff, and they're like, we've got an ambulance coming. Well, they do it while they've got the ambulance coming because there's no at the hospital. <laughs> 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 Again, small town. Uh, don't die out here. You, I mean, don't have a heart attack out here. You're going to die. No. Uh, uh, they they say, Mr. Jones, we we've got it. We we've got it. We've got to get your daughter here. Now. I mean, we got to get your daughter to Seattle now. We're flying a helicopter. And I'm like, what? And and as we're driving, so it's a long story short, but we had to run home and grab a whole bunch of crap. And as we're coming up the hill, we see this ambulance just hauling ass. And I realize that's my daughter in in that ambulance. And so I get behind the ambulance, and this is no lie, Adam. I'm on the freeway driving to Seattle, driving 120 miles an hour, and I never caught up to the ambulance. It was oh – they were booking – and um, they rushed oh, her. You must her. have literally been in hell. That's I awful. was. Yeah, because you don't know. I mean, I don't know if she's dying. No. Or, you know, and and um, yeah, we got to the hospital. They did emergency surgery. They they literally cut her open. They took her intestines out, set them on a table next to her because her her colon had been perforated and, and had to sew. So they had to find where the bullet went in. Then they had to sew her up. And then stuff all that goo back inside of her oh, stomach. Man. Yeah. And and what's crazy, because this is America and we have a really weird, stupid <coughs> healthcare system here. Like like when my wife had children, they send her home like a day later, right? Like yeah. they don't want you in the hospital. And I don't know what it's like in, in Europe. But anyways, uh, she they send her home two days later and she's got an open wound. And for the next two weeks, I had to like stuff goo into like i had to stick my hand into 
like oh the cre- God. the crevice, and it was so barfy every time. Yeah. So is she is she okay now? Like is she fully yeah. function? Yeah. 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 No. No. My her, God. Her, her woman parts. Everything works well. Yeah. And and she's and she's you know she's a she's a tattoo girl. She's got lots of tats. And she's tough as nails, isn't she? She's, I mean, she's totally quality. badass. Yeah, and and she wears that. I mean, she purposely wears low cut jeans and yeah. crop tops <laughs> just to show off the scar. Well, good for her. Yeah, it's totally rad. Crikey. Yeah, yeah. Um, <coughs> and, then, and then I'm I, and then to, to the quickly. Um, so I actually got remarried, which is why I have I have two yeah. sets of children. I have the three older children, and then I got remarried in '99. We waited ten years, and then we had three kids like that. And so I have a my oldest of the latest is called. Her name is Cadence because I'm a drummer, and that's a great ass name. <laughs> um, and then my boys, we had twins. So that's what we ended on was twins. Um, and so they are Leland and Alexander, and both of those are family names. Well, so, okay. So, yeah, past that. Nothing cool, but... Um, yeah, it's nothing I've ever explored, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Why something not? different. Something different to talk about. Who wants to... I don't want to hear if you're influenced by Pantera. I want to talk to you about cool <laughs> shit. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Yeah. Was you, did cool? you feel? Did you feel? Um, how long did it take for you to like decompress after the whole shooting incident? Oh, you know. Like, did you feel like you were in a bubble for the time till she was okay? Oh yeah. I mean, well, until she got out of the hospital, yeah, certainly. I yeah. mean, when we were, what I remember about being in the hospital is, of all things, watching Family Guy. You know, on the. <laughs> on the television, you know, in the right. waiting area. Yeah. And and saying to my wife, I didn't know the show was still on. You know what I mean? Like it's, this is <laughs> like this is 2004, I think. This is a long time ago. And uh anyways, yeah, uh I was fragged until we went home. In fact, when when they did the surgery, you know, you don't know if they're going to make it. You don't know. And I remember the doctor coming around the corner and walking that slow. I mean, he was walking so slow and I could see him coming from like, you know, a hundred meters away. Right. And, and he didn't look like everything was okay. And I was just like, he's going to tell me my daughter's dead. You know what I mean? I, it just, it was, it was so freaky. And he walks up and he goes, Mr. Jones, she's going to be okay. He was just really mellow. (laughs) <laughs> oh my god so yeah it was tough anything like that happened to your kids i hope not no nothing like that i mean my little boy had um he's had he had open heart surgery oh wow uh, which was fairly brutal but not obviously that was to write something that uh, right a birth team defect not a not a huge accident you know wow but yeah that was that was quite harrowing a yeah. uh, long drawn out process but he's He's great now. He's all good. Yeah. He says that has had like I'm sorry. he has like a checkup every he has like a checkup every couple of years, but he's fine. Wow. So wow. that's good. Wow. And and you said he's ten? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow, man. Do you plan on having any others? No. <laughs> <laughs> smart smart move. No, uh, I'm like done. The father of six don't have more children. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you want to have a life, man. Especially if this, you know, hellblind thing takes off like I hope it does. It's uh you know, it, as you know, I mean, being a musician and being an artist and have been in the industry for a long time, you certainly understand the work ethic that's required and you know the sacrifices, you know. Yeah. Success can't be the motivation. The motivation has got to be that you in- enjoy doing it and you you're getting out you get out of it more than you put in yeah. enjoyment wise and you know catharsis wise where if you, i think if you're doing it solely to uh to to progress the the band yeah. you're just setting yourself up for <laughs> a lot yeah. of disappointment whether yeah. it becomes successful or not there's always going to be you're always going to be player show and there's like 20 people there it happens you know yeah, yeah. so you just got to i think you just got to be there for in to do that to enjoy it not to there's nothing wrong with having, having aspirations obviously mm-hmm. uh but i think the motivation to do it has to be sincere and pure for, for the songs and to hang out with the people that you're creating music with yeah yeah 
Well, and I mean, to me, yeah, I, when I when when I mentioned success now as a as an older guy, that's that's the success I seek in everything too, right? Because I realized, I mean, for years, man, I thought, oh man, you know, I'm going to be this or I'm going to be that, and I'm sure you felt that way when you were younger too. And then eventually you start realizing it didn't. That, yeah, it never. It, it never. It never crossed my mind that I wouldn't. <laughs> yeah. Which I think is fine, and that's it's not a bad attitude to have in another way because maybe uh, it makes you you don't have the insecurities that maybe you would otherwise. It makes you non hesitant and gung ho with all yeah. of which is is good, especially when you're young and naive. You probably need a bit of that. Yeah, which is yeah. fine. Yeah. Well, that's where the Adam thing comes in, though. I, look, I, I'm not saying because you're named Adam, you behave a certain way, but th there is truth to it, man. I, I just know there is. So if my name was Brad, would I be a <laughs> little would I be a little bit more handsome? Yeah. No, but you would be high all the time. <laughs> Every Brad I know is high all the time. <laughs> oh, my God. That's great. <laughs> Well, so, okay, so let me ask you this. When did you know you were a singer? Um, I, I guess uh, when I was probably, like, 16, there was um, quite a healthy hardcore scene in the, 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 in the town that I'm from, South End. Um, so going to see, see bands all the time, it... it it suddenly makes it attainable because they're people from your area that are doing something and you think I can do that better than that. Whereas if, if you're just going to an arena show once every so often, it, it I think it, as a kid, it would seem further, further away. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, whereas it seemed very attainable. I was like, I can do that better than any of those guys. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I guess kind of then, when I I wasn't the greatest guitarist, I suck at drums, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, then right then, and then the yeah the first time I played, I enjoyed it, and there you go. That was my life ruined. That was my life ruined for the next thirty years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I mean I get you, man. I you know I I I listened to you know the album, and I and I tried to imagine each one of these guys, what they must be like in real life. And, you know, obviously this is the first time we've connected and hearing your voice there and then hearing you speak, it's literally like you channel something different. How, how do you, how do you prepare yourself? How do you, how are you able to create that sound and that, and that tone, that timbre? How are you able to do that? I have, I have a beer and a, maybe a cigarette and that's it. Done. <laughs> wow. Hardcore old school. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. But as you mentioned, like personalities of the band, I, I've always thought, which I'm sure you'll agree with me as a drummer, the, not the songs, but the vibe of a band, which often I think is more important than, than the sounds they're creating. It can come across more. Uh, for instance, you know, uh, have you heard Turnstile, the hardcore band? I know of them, but I don't. I don't know if I've actually listened to. They're, su they're, they're super successful. They're they're a really good band. But gotcha. and I saw them play like six weeks ago. Okay. Really, that awesome show. Um, yeah, huge venue. The band was brilliant, but they were just playing. Really, if you break it down, they're playing like 30, 40 year old riffs that are rehashed mm. Mm. but the thing that makes make them awesome was to the general vibe and the drummer brought such he's not playing anything complicated but he has such a good feel mm. and that's what connects with people i think and with hellblind the lucky the thing that the thing that really uh sort of motivates me to rehearse and stuff is will our drummer mm-hmm He's um I played with like lots of good drummers over the years. Mm -hmm. Uh but he's he he's got such an exciting feel. Yes, he does. Um, which it's hard to capture on a recording. I think I think it has to an extent, but he's just he's a really energetic uh 
exciting player and it makes it so fun to re- you can rehearse a song six times and you're not getting bored on the sixth time just because he's just he's just so energetic in the way yeah. he plays and that yeah. isn't what he's playing it's just it's the personality that comes through isn't it and I don't think maybe vocals to an extent but guitars and bass I don't think I don't think you can channel that uh, personality through those instruments as yeah. well as you can drums because it, it's literally it's feel it's feel yeah yeah it's the balance uh, <clears throat> so I I honestly think if if we couldn't change drummer because he he is the riffs are almost secondary to me it's the vibe that he's creating yeah is what the is what the band is yeah yeah I hope he doesn't watch this because he get a big head but you know, <laughs> well without but, without and and I would never tell him that to his face but that is that's the truth he's he's it's the field and the vibe that he brings that's what I think makes us sound how we sound. It's not so much obviously it's ridiculous to say it's not the it's not the songs, but the vibe that is is basically being channeled through through the drums. I yeah. Think, in my yeah. Opinion. Yeah. Well I mean it, it all starts there, but 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 the concoction that's created by the five of you is what makes Hellblind Hellblind, right? And, and yeah. and as you mentioned at the very top of the hour, you said, you know, I'm not so sure We've necessarily found everything we are that's going to make Hellblind Hellblind from here forward, right? Like, yeah, like you're looking to evolve still and and sort of oh, yeah, get totally. to who you are. But again, what I've heard is is not is not easily definable. Yes, it's heavy. Yes, it's hard. Yes, it has brutality. Yes, it's melodic. Yes, it's intense. Um, yes, it has riffs. Yes, it doesn't have riffs, right? It's it's a lot of things, but it deserves our attention because of the whole, the unit, the 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 <coughs> perfect cookie <laughs> that gets made. You know what I mean? Because yeah, because the outsiders, I mean, we're stupid, right? We look at bands and we see you and we go, oh, that guy. Because right, we I mean most most audiences do this. They identify with the singer or the guitar player or whoever's sort of out front or putting on the show, right? That's the person they're staring at and right or wrong. That's how it works. I mean, the best thing I can ever have happen on my show is have the front man come on the show because you're the one that gets the goose. It's just the way it is. Mm -hmm. But, but without those drums or like you said, I mean, you play with Will and Romeo must die, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, are you say so Danzig for it? Are you a fan of Danzig? Yes. So <clears throat> I love Danzig, right? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Chuck Biscuits. But maybe. the the record when Chuck Biscuits isn't in Danzig, it's a different band. It's totally. Isn't it? it was it's badass totally when Chuck different. was in the band. Yeah, and it's still good. It's still and the songs are, the songs are still good, but it hasn't got that. It hasn't got him driving it. It's a feel thing. It's a feel thing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, look, like I love Black Sabbath. I do. I love yeah. Sabbath. Um, now, now here's the thing. I know I'm going to commit total blasphemy here, but but now Bill Ward created a very specific feel <coughs> for Sabbath. He uh-huh. did. Now, is he a drum soloist or or does he have perfect time? The answer is definitely not on either of those. Okay. I prefer Tommy Aldridge playing black sabbath songs i do i when when ozzy toured the whole black sabbath thing in the early 80s that was bad ass rudy sarzo playing bass come on dude that was so sick <laughs> that was so sick but but it doesn't sound like it doesn't sound like black sabbath it sounds no. like a cover band yeah yeah and and yeah, it's the same thing, you know, with with Danzig. I, I actually have to tell you a funny story about Chuck Biscuits. Um, he at the time, back in the mid '90s, he used to live here in, in the Seattle area, and uh, at the Seattle Drum Shop, I used to go in there all the time and buy gear. And I walk in one day, and there's a there's a want. I mean, not a wanted. What do you call it? Drummer available poster on the wall. For real, <laughs> for real. It's written in red, mar- magic marker. And it says drummer. I'll never forget this as long as I live. Drummer available. Call me. I'm pretty good. Used to be in Danzig <laughs> and Circle Jerks. No, for real. Fuck and it. then it said Chuck with his phone number. Chuck, 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 Chuck. And I'm like, 
You freaking Chuck Biscuit. <laughs> that's like Keith Moon putting his name yeah. on the wall. That's crazy. So why but, was he? Why why was he doing that? Uh, because he didn't have any work, dude. And I mean, and and to get back to the feel thing. There's a lot of people that don't like that feel, that style, that 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 gooey. Because right, he's kind of a got of a gooey way of playing. He's not a super precise. He's not a precision master, right? He, you know, I mean, nowadays, dude, Chuck wouldn't fit in anywhere because everybody expects you to play with a click, right? Ex expects sort yeah. of perfect technical perfection, and and the groove guys, they've lost the gigs, man. Mm. You know? Oh, it's a shine. Yeah, nobody wants to do it. <laughs> nobody. I mean, I, I mean, I don't know anybody. I mean, fortunately for me, if I wanted to go back out in the biz, I could do it because I, I, I can play with a click. But I, but I prefer the live feel because the, you know, again, that groove's there, that bounce is there, you know. Yeah. Um, I want to ask you about stamping ground for a quick. Can I do that? Yeah. Yeah. Of course. So, so I mean, that's in your rearview mirror. I mean, it's not a thing anymore. Mm -hmm. And you know, I think the hardest part about being a musician is is when we're really into playing music and creating music. You know, we see the splintered remains all around us, right? People who just <laughs> do it for fun, they want to be in a garage band for a month, whatever they're doing. Yeah. And guys like us, we're always looking to how can we keep moving this this thing forward? How can we keep creating? How can we keep evolving? Um before Hellblind, what were you doing? Because weren't you out of the biz for like 10 years? I mean, it was a long time. I think it was, what was it? So, it was just Romeo Must Die? Odd, it, yeah, we did Romeo Must Die. I think, we, I think Romeo ended in like, oh, what was it? I think it, I've got to say 2012. Okay. I think, uh, which... Well, then my, I had my son. As I said earlier, there was complications and things, so that took up quite a lot of my time, my focus. Yeah. yeah. And then when he was all all fine again, um, I sort of really wanted to celebrate and do something for me, so we did We did a Stamford Ground reunion. Uh, oh. Only a few shows. We played like a Sonisphere, uh, which is like a festival in the UK, a big festival. Yeah, yeah. There was like... Yeah, yeah. A load of other people, and then we played a few shows in Greece, Bulgaria, and we ended up with like a an indoor festival in in the U in north of the UK called uh, Damnation, which was okay. amazing with a with a bolt fryer. <laughs> oh wow! Um, and then since wow. that was 2014, since then I did nothing for quite a while. I just and do you know what? It wasn't out of it wasn't a decision. It just it had just finished, and I just thought, well, I, I don't know, I wasn't really inspired to to do anything, to be honest, yeah. music wise. And I think, it, if I'm honest, I think it's done me good because <laughs> uh, I'm I feel energized and excited to be playing. Yeah. Whereas uh, you can kind of get into a routine, can't you, of yeah. doing it? And whilst whilst it, I always it, like live was always different. I was always you know s super pumped to do that, but. Writing, recording, and, and rehearsing even it become a bit of a oh, can I be bothered, you know, really. But yeah. so I think the few years off is, yeah, I feel particularly invigorated and excited to play. That's awesome. So uh, I think it turned out for the best. It's all good. Yeah. Did Will call you? Is that how you ended up in uh, Helpline? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, actually, no. <laughs> Wait, Will. Yeah. Come on over, buddy. <laughs> Paul, actually, Paul actually called and said they'd been oh. writing. Him, him and Mark from Pitch of Death, they'd been writing songs for a little while, didn't really know what direction they wanted to go, and asked yeah. if I wanted to come down. Yeah. And I said no. And then uh, Paul said, well, Will's playing drums. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so I thought, I was like, oh, I'll, I'll come down and hang out. And I, I, I was just, you know, I wasn't really, like I said, I wasn't really fussed about playing. And then it felt good, and the song sounded even then, pretty, you know, what the, the riffs they had kicking around, it sounded quite different to anything I'd done before. Yeah. Obviously, stylish, I think they're using like eight string guitars or something ridiculous, but it sounds <laughs> fucking, in, in a room, it sounds fucking crushing. Oh, you know? I bet. Yeah, you can feel it. So, um, yeah. So, yeah, it all went from there.
Really? Yeah. And uh, the, the, the other guitarist, Charlie, I've never been in a band with a female before. Yeah. Uh, but she's she's a really good player. Yeah. Really, really good. And I also find uh, she's fairly forthcoming with ideas, like vo- vocal pattern ideas and stuff, which I've never been in a band with anyone that's had any suggestion ever. Wow. <laughs> really? Uh, wow. No. And it's it's quite nice that she was she will say do you want to, she's not scared to say try this and she has some good ideas and it's yeah. so that's exciting moving forward as well yeah that's maybe maybe that's why this whole thing works so well because I mean like you said you've never had a female in the band before but but Charlie comes in and she's got that that je ne sais quoi right she's got that certain something and she's got the she's got the balls. If, in a sense, right, to come in yeah. and say, be, do this, try this. And a lot of people won't do that. It doesn't matter, male or female. They just won't They won't say anything. You know, it sounds like... Well, yeah, to, to my detriment, <laughs> my, my my personality is fairly... Uh, I don't know what the word is. I'm very stubborn and... Yeah. Adam-like. Yeah. But she doesn't care, <laughs> which is a really, really good, good quality, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, Helpline is a, you know, I mean, I, I, I'm hesitant to use the word super group, but it, it certainly is, at least if you're into those type of bands to have that all those all those players come together under one roof, you know what I mean? And then you got the new EP. I think it, it, it comes out on the 23rd, right? Plague on all your houses. I think it's, yeah, 23rd. And uh, the, the, the lead song, Hitch, is coming out on the, I think it's the 10th. Yeah, tenth or eleventh, something. Tenth like or eleventh, one of those. Yeah. Um. So yeah, hitched is um. I'm I'm really pleased with how that came out. It's it's slightly, it starts. It's got it's kind of slower in tempo to the other songs, mm-hmm. but you can get it's like the the it's got the bottom thing, <laughs> yes. going just starting just with the drums and at the end as well. It does, and uh, that's a song that Charlie had some ideas for. Uh, on the second the second chorus I start overlaying parts of the first verse over the top of the chorus, which isn't something that I would never have thought of. Hmm. And I'm really pleased with how it worked out. So all credit yeah. to Charlie. Yeah. Is that is that album uh, excuse me, is that uh, song a uh, autobiographical? Thank goodness. I'm in a very <laughs> I'm in a very happy uh Happy okay. marriage. No, That's good. it's not. I'm, I'm glad. I'm but, glad. I was a little concerned yeah, there you. for a second. Yeah, the, the dude I was speaking to yesterday said the exact same thing. He was like, oh, I'm sorry to hear about your situation. <laughs> and also, where I am, <laughs> I'm in my, uh, uh, to try and get a quiet place, I'm in my son's bedroom, which is like the loft room, oh, yeah. which kind of looks like, because it, it's a sofa and a little, it looks like I'm in a bed sit, so I've been kicked out of my house. And I'm, <laughs> <laughs> but does. no, luckily for me, it's not. But no, I've, it's the EP in general is kind of lyric wise. I was kind of looking at um, just the intricacies of relationships, and obviously marriage generally being the most intimate of relationships, and how I think when two people meet, the things that attract two people, you've got two individuals, and your one's attracted to the other one for being that person, and vice versa, and then over a period of time, people can lose themselves in the other person and they become, instead of being two individuals that loved each other and respected each other, they're mm-hmm. a couple. And I think as soon as they're a couple, it weak, it weakens the, the relationship to an extent. I think it's good for people to try and retain their self as in what they were before they met because that's what made them attracted to the other person. Yeah, if yeah. you know what I mean, and and just I've had a, a lot of. I suppose I'm getting to the age of my early forties. A lot of my friends are now coming, getting divorced, and things like that. And I look at, and I look at it, and I think, you know, it it it's horrible how these two people can, the journey can take such <laughs> an awful turn yeah. at any moment. So yeah. that's kind of what the song's about. It, it luckily it isn't about me. It's about good that's, friends of mine which is upsetting good. and also sometimes when people don't get divorced you just see that they're, they're they're just stuck and they're 
there's like a battle and it was little snipes at each other and digs and the one upmanship and it's it's horrible to see and that's what the song's about Up yeah man number. Oh, I, no, I love that. You know, it's interesting because I was talking with my daughter about this the other day, the idea of marriage being a death, right? Because, mm. for example, like when your wife marries you, she leaves your fa her family and becomes part of yours now, right? A lot of times they take the last name, right? Mm -hmm. and nowadays, things not so common, but <laughs> but but taking the last name and there's this sort of spiritual death that happens. It's an interesting thing. And people sort of mourn at the wedding, right? They cry because this thing is happening, but it's bittersweet because it isn't just beautiful. It's kind of sad. Yeah. And, and yet what happens? Yeah. People get in marriages and then they start trying to change the other person into being something other than what they married. And it's just so. Yeah. Why do that? Bizarre. You know, and I've probably been guilty of it at times, but you know, um, we got to stop that shit, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just it's yeah, it sucks, doesn't it? You know, but it, yeah. and it's horrible watching people just be almost con becoming content with with the contempt. <laughs> I suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's good. Yeah. Oh, I should I should have used that in the song. <laughs> but, um, yeah, but you know, it's kind of. It's yeah, it's upsetting and it's sad, but you know, there you go. Yeah, yeah. luckily I'm not in that position. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, man, we totally need. I say this all the time. We need to learn how to undo the things that we've done to ourselves, right? Like, I mean, yeah. we need to undo them ourselves. Um, one thing I wanted to ask you before you go. I mean, I know we're limited on time here. Um, is uh. Something I've noticed with the album. So, so first of all, you have the EP plague, plague on all your houses, not on both your houses. I like the I like the slight <laughs> exaggeration there. Very badass. Um, but it's amazing. It's a five song EP. Um, every song is extraordinary. Um, it opens with the unbelievably ferocious Evil Eye, um, and it closes with a piece called Soul Assassin. And and I noticed with the titles <laughs> of. Uh, of uh, you know of the songs um mm -hmm. the lyrical content that i've been able to find online and then the stuff that you have done in your past as well that there always seems to be um they it's like your ideas revolve around s spiritual ideas right uh, spiritual terms and i wondered is that just an accident is that me trying to find a common thread in all your creation or you know like what gives if I'm honest, I found that I, I try and write, I spend quite a long time writing the vocal patterns, mm -hmm. um, but actual lyrics, I'll, I'll try and write them the day before I need them. Because wow. if I spend, I'm not the kind of guy that wants to sit down and, and, you know, and when I force myself to do that, it seems to come across, very, when I read them back, it's, it's really forced and not, the way I would say things. Mm. So I'm not, and I'm not really writing the lyrics for other people. If I'm honest, I'm writing it to, so that when we play, whatever band I mean, when we put, when I play, I can have total conviction. It's what I want to be singing about. Right. Like in Romeo Must Die, we had a song called All Life Ends in Failure. And it was a song about like, um, old people's homes, mm. like old folks homes, which isn't something that, a metal fan wants to really chant about that's kind of relevant to me because it because it's something i felt passionate about i think it it means that i can be sincere and pure while playing and hopefully people will relate to that you know yeah. so yeah I, I try to i kind of think through the ideas that the songs are going to be about but i don't actually put pen to paper till the day before i, I need them like as in i'm going to record it or something like that yeah because, yeah, I just find it comes across as in the way I would speak rather than, you know, you're trying to get, you second guess yourself and it gets a bit, get too wordy and you're like, yeah. oh, is that, do I sound like an idiot there? Or, yeah, like you're trying really I, hard. Yeah. Whereas I just, I try not, I just write down what, what comes, you know, what comes out straight away. I think that's the best way to go for me, for me anyway. Yeah. I you're actually the first person I've ever met that writes lyrics literally moments before you sing them or scream them in your case. I haven't always done that. I haven't always done that, but I started to do it in Romeo and Must Die because of time. And I was like, hang on a minute. I'm, I'm way happier with these ones that I've spent 
half an hour on than those ones that I've been looking at for a month. So I just started to do that. And it, yeah, it seems to work for me. Hmm. Until it's going to, what will happen one day is I'll be recording the next day and I won't have any words and I'll have a mind blank. <laughs> I'll be like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Well, okay. So this all leads up to my last question, which is, Go for it. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, first of all, thank you because this has been so much fun for me. It's so different than the normal boring interviews, right? Thank you so much. Um, thank you. Yeah, you're you're really fascinating to me, and and what I think I like about you so much is you're so straightforward, and you're and you're and you've allowed yourself to be real. It doesn't feel like you're trying to prop yourself up a bit, and. You know, artists are commonly a bit crazy, right? You, you say know? that. To interrupt you, I am propping up myself with <laughs> an acupuncture mat right now. <laughs> with two of <with> that. <laughs> For those who are listening, yeah, he's got some crazy black thing he's sitting on and is poking his butt. Oh, mate, it's the dream. <laughs> it's the dream. That's why I'm so relaxed. It turns me into a big jelly. <laughs> <laughs> okay so back to the crazy <laughs> artist thing <laughs> um but i mean look look man it's true i mean you you've, you've been very forthright and open with it and and you've actually shared it you actually don't even have to answer this question because you've kind of already answered it but you know we we tend to be in search for the deeper parts of our identity, right? We're, we're, we're a lot louder than other people because we're artists and we're seeking to fill the God size hole. You know what I mean? And, and, and all that stuff comes at a cost. So, mm -hmm. so the question would be, you know, what do you think you've given up in your life to be where you are right now? <sighs> That is a hard one, man. I, I mean, I think what you mean as far as what I've given up, what was playing music costly? Yeah, I mean, we all trade something for something, right? Uh, yeah. Whether it's relationships or time or, right? We trade time for money or money for fame or fame for success or success for celebrity. Yeah. We're always trading. Do you know what? I, I think in the grand, I started pretty young. Like I started at like regularly touring it i was just i was just after my 19th birthday wow so it's sort of all i knew for a while i would obviously work in between tours so it's not like you know life went great and easy but it's sort of all i knew so i don't know what i may have gone into a career or something but do you know what i didn't all i really wanted to do was to rock <laughs> so perfect i don't know i think if i hadn't have joined bands and been busy with them i would have spent the time wanting to do that anyway if i'm honest mm. um and would have been pretty directionless at least it's always given me a focus yeah yeah um which i think yeah it's probably needed <laughs> um so no i don't i don't think i've lost anything You're the crown.